So welcome to Whippoorwill Holler. I'm Miss Lori, and this is Mr. Brown. We live in the hills of Arkansas. We love the Lord. Keepers of the old way, but accept some of the new. We love to cook, and we love to eat. We love to garden. It's in our blood. It's how we stay sustainable and fill our pantry. We do a lot of canning and preserving. We live a sustainable life. We love our family. We work hard. And every once in a while, we like to dance. So y'all join us. So today we're going to be making some sourdough English muffins. But we're going to start from the very, very beginning and make our sourdough starter. Because I know a lot of y'all uh, say y'all having a lot of trouble with your sourdough starters. Um, but it's just really simple. I think people tend to overthink it sometimes because there's just so much out there on social media about sourdough, starter sourdough, bread. Um, of course, there's a lot of good recipes out there too. But also, we just want it simple. There is the artesian sourdough breads that are, that are so like, they're just so perfect. But as just regular homemakers, <laughs> we just don't have that perfection time so we just want something that we can we can easily do and i do know that sourdough has been around since the beginning and i mean just take for instance you take your your cooks that were out on the trail with the cowboys you know sourdough starter was always usually in there you know in with all their other uh staples that they cooked with and a lot of times, if they didn't have a starter, once they made their bread up or their biscuit or something like that, they would take the dough that they had made and they would put it in a container. And most of the time they didn't have glass or anything like that, like we have, but they would put it in a, in a little tin or something like that. And they would use that as time goes on as their starter for for other recipes bread recipes biscuits or whatever palm bread or whatever and i mean they thought a lot of their sourdough starters because if it was cold outside or anything like that they would take that little container of their sourdough starter and they would put it with them as you know when they would bundle up and go to sleep that night they would put it in there with them to, to keep it at a certain temperature I do know that, that my kitchen stays, I don't know. Danny, how, how hot do you think our kitchen stays? Between 75? No? I'd say around 70, 75. 75. So evidently that's a good temperature because my starter does really good. And it just it just seems to to be able to activate and live like that. So you don't want it in a cold space, that's for sure. But this is just, we're going to start at day one, go through day five, and day five is going to be the day that we make our English muffins. So it will sour. You'll have enough time for it to sour. If you want it to be a little more sour, you can even go more days than that. But for me and Mr. Brown, that's plenty of time for sourdough starter for us. So... I think y'all are going to enjoy this. His mama always, for years, had a sourdough starter that um, it just stayed right there by on her counter. Usually you'd see it by her sink, and she would just feed it every once in a while. She didn't fret over it or nothing, and she just, if she wanted a, a loaf of sourdough bread, there it was. Or she wanted to put it in with her biscuits or something or pancakes, there it was. But she usually just always used it in bread. It was not difficult, nothing hard, and uh, I'm going to show you how we're going to do it. Okay, let's get started on getting our sourdough starter going. 
and we're going to call this day one. Day one is the day that you go ahead and uh, get it going. And I'm just using a quart glass mason jar. I'm going to put in a half a cup of just all-purpose flour. I'm using King Arthur all-purpose flour and making a mess, of course. Now you can stir this up in a in a bowl and then pour it in here. It would be a lot less mess, but it's okay. Then we're going to put in a half a cup of just room temperature water out of the faucet. And, uh, of course, we have well water. We don't have city water, so you might want to use uh, some good uh, filtrated water that don't have maybe some kind of chemicals or bleach or something in it. So you just want to stir it up good. And I don't like all that on the side of my jar, so I will come back and I'll try to get some of that off the side. I mean, it's not going to hurt anything. Just try to clean it up a little bit. Now, it's early in the morning. It's about 5.30 a.m. So when I come back tomorrow morning, that will be day two. And I will feed it the same time before I go to work, about 5.30. And um, it'll just keep feeding and fermenting. And I'm going to get me another little rubber spatula, and I'm going to kind of clean the sides down just a little bit. And what you want to do, you just want to take you a, a piece of linen or cloth, or some people use... Uh, a coffee filter or you can even put a a jar lid on there just keep it real loose don't tighten it down and uh, put it back on your counter a place that's not cold you don't want your starter to be cold um, my house uh, in the kitchen where I'm going to place it stays between about uh, 75 80 degrees probably probably around 75 76 degrees and my starters do real good in the house so so we'll put that on the counter till in the morning and then we'll feed her again she'll be hungry and uh, by day five we'll be ready to to make us something really good i'm thinking about some english muffins you can see how i didn't get that very clean but that's okay it's gonna it's gonna ferment and rise and fall anyways. So we were here we are day two. Showing some little bubblies on top. So now we're gonna feed it. So I'm gonna feed it this morning. A half a cup of flour. And a half a cup of room temperature water. And we're just going to stir it up. And let it do its little bubbly thing. Let it ferment sour and bubble up then we'll be back in the morning about the same time and feed her again okay so it's day three it's early in the morning again before i go to work our starter is still active and you can see down here to the side i can tell that at some point it fermented and it uh, it kind of rose up like it'll do and then it it'll fall back down and a lot of times if your container is pretty full you want to put it on top of a plate because I have had it to ferment and come plumb over the side so we're gonna add we're gonna feed it another half a cup of flour and another half a cup of water and uh, we'll go on to work and we'll feed it again in the morning. 
It's about that easy. Day four, and it's feeding time. This morning we're going to be feeding our starter just a fourth a cup of flour. I think it'll do well on a fourth of a cup instead of a half. We're going to give it a fourth of a cup of water. And we're going to stir it up real good. And then the next feeding will be in the morning. And that will be our last day of feeding before our recipe. And you see it's it's active. It's bubbling. And doing really good. So I'm getting pretty excited because I can't wait to make some homemade sourdough English muffins. The sourdough starter has done good all week. So I'm really happy with it. Okay, I got up early this morning and I fed it. It's the fifth day and it's in the morning and I fed it a fourth a cup of flour and a fourth a cup of water. And you can see now that it's ready for me to use and we're fixing to make us some English muffins. Now this is sour. You can smell the sour, but it's just not over. It's just right for me. And I think it'll be just right for y'all unless y'all like something really, really sour tasting. Y'all really gonna like this sourdough starter. So if you follow each day, you should be okay. So now that it's ready, I'm gonna get all my ingredients together and we're gonna get our dough mixed up. And we'll be cooking our English muffins on top of the stove. Be good. I'm going to use my big kitchen aid today. We're going to be using seven cups of flour. And I'm going to use my bread flour to make these English muffins. But you can use all purpose. Um, if you're wanting to uh, use a, a different kind of flour, you may have to adjust your ingredients. I've got two cups of water, about 110 degree water. I've got a tablespoon of yeast. I've got two tablespoons of sugar. You can use active dry yeast or you can use the, the instant yeast. Both will work. So we've got our sugar, our yeast, and everything in there. And now we're going to be putting in our dry milk. This is half a cup of dry milk. Uh, for this recipe to work, yes, you're going to need to use dry milk. If a recipe calls for dry milk, you just about need to use dry milk. Uh, using just uh, regular milk, uh, you'd have to adjust the rest of the ingredients. So a half a cup of dry milk, and I'm going to get my sourdough starter out. And I think it's going to pour pretty good today. Sometimes, some days it's thicker than others. Today it's a little bit loose, but it's it's really active today. So I think it's going to do a good job. And I can't tell you how good that smells. You know, sometimes you can smell your, your sourdough and it has a sweet, a sweet, sour, yeasty smell. And then sometimes you go to it and it's just a little bit overpowering. But this smells really good. I think I'm going to put, I've got four tablespoons of room temperature butter. I'm going to go ahead and put that in. And we're going to go ahead and put our starter in. A whole cup. You know, Danny don't like things that are too yeasty tasting. So this right here, these are not too yeasty tasting at all. They just got just the right, right amount, pretty much. Okay, we got our seven cups of bread flour. And like I said, you can use all purpose. And I'm just going to scoop it in a little bit at a time so that I don't make a big Miss Lori mess like I always do. <laughs> I got a small kitchen, so I had a limited area to really work in, but I do have my areas of, of where I bake or where I just do regular cooking, but it's kind of elbow room, but that's okay. I love my little kitchen. 
just get it scooped in there. Now I can go ahead and I'll just get the rest of it in my bowl. Now if you do this by hand, just know that this dough is not going to be real loose and it's not going to be real sticky. So with seven cups of flour, um, it might get kind of rough on you trying to get it mixed up by hand. I'm going to put two teaspoons of salt on top. So let's reread everything. We've got our water, we've got our yeast, we got our sugar, we got our butter, our starter, our flour, our salt. So we're good to go. So let's just turn this baby on. We're going to let it mix. And after it mixes up good and turns into a pretty good size ball and it's not sticky or anything, we'll let it knead for about five minutes. If you feel like it's too sticky, you can add just a little bit of flour to it because this does not need to be a sticky dough. This needs to be a firm dough. It's been kneading for about five minutes and it's all come together really good. All the dough come together. Now this is not, y'all watch me make quite a bit of bread and, and I'll sometimes tell you, you know, the dough, if I can get this off, I'll tell you sometimes that the dough needs to be a little bit on the sticky side loose but this dough does not now i've got my bread bowl and i've got a little bit of um, olive oil here i'm going to put a little bit of olive oil in it now we're going to get our dough out and you can tell by the way i'm working with it that it's you know it's a heavy kind of a stiffer dough. But as it rises, it will, it'll soften up and uh, it'll be a lot softer dough. So we're just gonna put it here in our bowl. Just try to put it in a round ball as you can. Move it around, get that oil on it. And if you need to, you can put a little bit more oil on the top. Because as it rises, you don't want it to stick to your, your tea towel or whatever you're putting over your, your bread. So I'll just cover this up. And I'll find me a warm place. And I figure it's going to be over here by my wood cook stove. This is our dough after rising for about an hour and a half. I'm going to punch it down and I'm just going to kind of gather it up and put it on my flour, floured board here. And I'm just going to, oops. Lord made. I'm just going to knead it for just just a little bit. Now this is going to make several English muffins. I'm not sure how many it'll make, but we'll see once we get it done. Okay, I'm going to make sure that i got plenty of flour on my board. What I want to do is I want to cut my dough in half. I want to for my bench scraper. 
what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this in half the best I can. Measure it out. Eyeball it. Just like that. And I'm going to cover this up. And I'm just going to let it sit here for about 10 minutes or so. And just let it rest. Let that gluten just kind of rest. Just like that. And we'll be back and uh, finish making our, our muffins. We'll get them on the sheet pan and then there'll be another rise after that. Okay, our dough is rested about 10 minutes or so. And you wanna just kind of roll it out to about a half an inch thick and just take whatever kind of cutter you got, whatever size English muffins you want. This one's about three inches. You can do about two and a half inches, three inches, whichever. And I'm just gonna take my, and I'm hoping this plastic will cut, cut through that. And you're just gonna take them just like that. And you're just gonna put them on your sheet pan that I have just a little bit. I've got some, some fine ground cornmeal here. And I'm just gonna kind of just turn it over like that and just place it right here on my sheet pan. Now any kind of cutter that you got. And I'll just continue to, to cut them out and any little pieces like this, I'll just uh, bring it together and knead it back together. Then I'll make some more uh, English muffins. So I'm gonna roll out my, my second dough ball. About a half an inch or so. And I'll continue cutting these and putting them on the paint. Okay, I ended up with about 22, probably could have got 24 out of it if I'd have maybe rolled them a little bit thinner, but 22 is good. And what I'm going to do is put some plastic wrap on them, just kind of light over it. Now I do have all my muffins here dusted with a little bit of cornmeal on the bottom and then I dusted the top of them with a little bit of cornmeal. And I'm going to cover this up again with a tea towel. Then I'm going to put it in a warm place again and I'm going to let them, I'm going to let them sit and rise for about 45 minutes. Um, I want them this close together because I really don't want them to rise and get bigger this way. I, they can rise a little bit up, but as far as spreading out, I really don't want them to spread out too much. So I want them to rise just like this. So we'll be back in about 45 minutes and then we're going to start cooking our English muffins. It's been about 35 minutes and I think my muffins have rose really good. So we're gonna 
get them. We're going to take them over their stove and we're going to start uh, cooking us some English muffins. Well, y'all can do this in an electric skillet. I've got a, this is my crepe pan or skillet right here. And that's what I'm going to be using. I'm just going to do a few at a time. We're not going to grease or butter or anything on our skillet. And I've got it on about uh, medium high heat. And I'm just going to put our English muffins on our skillet, just like this. I'm also going to take, I've got just a little bitty uh, sheet pan here that goes with my little oven, counter uh, top oven. And I'm just going to place it on top just to keep them from rising too much as they cook. I'm going to cook them on that side for about, I don't know, about five, six, seven minutes or until they're they're getting kind of golden brown on that one side. If you have to, you can adjust your your fire. Make sure they're not cooking too fast. Okay, it's been about five minutes, so I'm gonna take that off and we're just gonna Flip them now and you can see how brown they're getting on that side that one's good and brown so they're looking really good now at this point I think I'm gonna turn my burner down just a little I had turned it up back up I'm gonna turn it back down put this back on top and I'm gonna let that cook another five to seven minutes. Um, may not take that long. When it starts getting good and brown that side, what I'll do is I'll get my digital thermometer and I'll see what the temp is inside of them. And they should, if they read about 190, then they're good and done inside. Okay, I'm going to take my skillet and I'm going to get some of this um, cornmeal off of it because it'll just burn as I put the other muffins on there. But you've seen that they come to 190 degrees Fahrenheit and you could hear and tell that they sounded hollow inside and that's how you can tell a lot of times if your bread's done when you tap on it and it has that, that hollow sound. So now we're just going to add four more muffins on here. And we're just going to continue till we get them all cooked. If you don't have a digital thermometer, the best way to tell is just, like I said, just to tap on them. But what I wanted to see is about how long it took. And it took a good 10 minutes, five minutes on each side. So I toasted you a homemade English muffin. I wanted you to taste it. Because I know so. you... I've been outside cleaning on the shop, rearranging. I'm still not moving in out there. 
and it's about 24 degrees. Been sleeting for about two hours, and I come in and this wonderful, wonderful smell inside here, and this is one of my favorite breads, y'all. English muffin. Toasted butter. The apricot? Apricot jelly. Jam. Jam. <laughs> so is it good? It's delicious. I want one of these every morning. Okay. When I'm heading out the door going to work. <laughs> okay. So would you say it's Larrapin? I would absolutely say it's Larrapin. Mmm. Good mm -hmm. stuff. Okay, I want to show y'all something before we leave this video. These English muffins freeze really well. And so what do I do, and it's a good idea unless you have a bunch of people you're going to be feeding, they'll eat every one of these. <laughs> but just me and Mr. Brown, we just need a couple, you know, every so often. So I wrap them individually, and then I just put them in a bread bag and uh, put them in the freezer and then we can just get if he just wants one in the morning or if I you know there's one morning I want one I can just grab one or probably the night before and take it out so it'll thaw out that way in the morning it's thawed out and we can just cut it open put it in toaster and go so there we go we've got a bag full of homemade sourdough English muffins that we can eat on for quite a while.